The following program was recorded at Works Annual Conference in Orlando, Florida. I'm pleased to welcome Supply Chain Brain Editor Emeritus, Jean Murphy. Hello. Today I'm speaking with Steve Malike, partner at the Progress Group. We're talking about a new technique for improving productivity at manufacturing and distribution facilities called crowd engineering. Welcome, Steve. Thank you very much, Jean. So tell us, what is this crowd engineering? Well, well crowd engineering is really a, a new answer to an age-old problem, a question about you know, how should a job be done. And that job can be a manufacturing job or it can be a distribution center job. What, what we do is we'll take video out uh, of various operators working in a facility and we'll feed that information into computers that will uh, transmit it overseas to our offices in Mumbai where analysts there will break down each of the individual tasks that go into a job and then we figure out who is the best person that performs each step of a process. Like uh, if we're saying packing, it might be just sealing a box. We'll, we'll study that in intimate detail and figure out which worker does that the best. And then we'll, we'll figure out for each step of the process who's, which is the best technique and we'll glue it all together and teach the, all of the workers what the best practices in a given distribution center or manufacturing plant would be for a job. So this sounds a little bit like the time motion studies of the 50s or whenever they were popular. <laughs> that, and a lot of people, I think, to ask me that question. I, I think the motion studies, you know, the, the concept that Frank and Lillian Gilbreth came up with years ago um, what is, is a little bit different. I mean, it, first of all, it, their approach, um, which, by the way, they took into their actual lives. I mean, they actually used their, their efficiency techniques to control or define how much time their kids were given to brush their teeth. Uh, but their, their approach was um, to film uh, operators in a lab and then they would break down the activities in the lab, not in the actual floor, but then they would try to manipulate the motions of the operator themselves as opposed to what we do, which is really, we, we're not trying to create, the engineers don't create the process, it's really the operators and how they already work today that have innovated and created lots of different ways to do a given job that we we kind of mine those operators to figure out what's the best way to do a job so it's not the engineer figuring it out we're just trying to borrow what already is being used out on the floor so do you typically find one person who is far better than everybody else at doing something like taping a box yeah yeah they're generally the, the the approach will uncover you know for each of these different steps somebody that that's just got some unusual kind of technique and, and these techniques kind of develop just out of, of, of just the sheer desire to kind of make their job or their make their life easier. Um, people will experiment in a wide variety of ways and I, I don't think a lot of manager, managers today really kind of appreciate how much their, their workforce is innovating in terms of the processes that they use on the floor. Do these people usually know they're doing it well? <laughs> no, I, I, I think that uh, We've run into situations where we'll discover something that, that in the computer that says, hey, look, this is a really super fast worker at this particular step of the process, and we'll go out and ask them, why, why are you so fast? And they won't, they'll say, well, what do you mean, fast? Because maybe overall they're not, but that particular step they are. But when we, we ask them, after we've seen the video in slow motion, why they do certain motions, then they'll say, oh, they'll usually give us uh, you know, an explanation. Let me, let me give you an example. There was a, a, a lady that we uh, watched picking orders. And as she was walking along, um, she, you, you look at her, she's, she's picking orders just like anybody else. But when the computers analyzed the, the time that it took her to pick orders, we realized she spent almost no time looking at her scanner that was on her arm to figure out where the next pick location was located. Now, it's really hard, I mean, it's, to, to envision how a picker can know where to go to pick merchandise without actually looking at the scanner. But she had figured out a way to do it. And what we, what we found out was that she knew something that she had never verbalized to anybody else. She knew that frequently if, if she picks from this location, the next pick usually for that carton will come right next door. 
And, and when we actually dug into the actual computer data, the history of, of the activity that that woman had performed, indeed that was tr true 90% of the time. So it was a bet that was worth making, but nobody knew it and you would never have seen it had we not you know, used the, the computer to analyze uh, what this woman was doing. That's a great example. Are, th are there any other examples like that you can share with us? Sure. I, it, it's one of the things, it's not just the, the, the best performers that we, we find have these great ideas. I mean, it's also sometimes uh, some of the lower performers can have some really neat little thing that they do that no one else in the facility would do. I, I remember working in a packing environment where we were studying people packing uh, uh, apparel into a box. We had filmed the best people doing this process, but then I had some extra time, so I, I decided that uh, we would we would film one of the lower performers just just for fun to see what it was like. Um, there was a part of the process in packing that when you finished an order, you had to peel off a little blue sticker and stick it on the uh, the package before you threw it onto the conveyor. That was done so in case they the conveyor broke down, they had to find all the next day packages. They could just look for the packages with the little blue dot. Well, I ran across this one woman, again, who was not necessarily the, the greatest performer, who had, com had a completely different way of doing this process. Instead of peeling off a little dot, she had this big giant stamp. And, and I, I asked her, I said, you know, Miss Sue, where did, where, did you, where did you get the stamp? And she says, well, I got it at a bingo parlor. I said, well, show me how, it, what, what, when, when I saw her, what she did is she would take the, the, the labels, she'd have a big stack of labels, and they were all for the next day order. She'd just go stamp, 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 stamp. And so Miss Sue had uncovered something that no one else knew about in the facility. And I asked Miss Sue, I said, you know, how long have you worked here? And she said, you know, I've been here for about 13 years. So sometimes these things go on for a long time, unseen by the masses of people. Some of them are the good performers, but sometimes the ideas come from from the people that aren't necessarily the greatest performers, but they know one little thing that no one else knows, that we try to mine and teach to the, the workforce in general. So does this always work when you go in? Do you always find a way to improve? I, you know, it, it works a lot of times. Um, I think where it doesn't work, because I don't want it to kind of appear like a panacea, because it's not, but I think the places where it doesn't work um, are, are, are situations where you don't have a lot of people doing the same job. I mean, crowd engineering is dependent upon a lot of diversity and how the work is done. Because uh, if there's only one or two or three people that do it, there tends to be not enough differences in how the work is, is actually executed to have enough good ideas out there that we can mine and, and in turn spread across all of the workforce. So the, the best kind of environments to do this are jobs that usually have 10 or more people performing the same activity because then we got enough diversity of method, methods that we can find something that, that uh, we can pull together that's better than what any of the individuals do on their own. So that's why crowd, that's why yeah, it's called yeah. crowd. Right, right. I mean it's, it's really based on the, the concept that's getting a lot more mileage called collective intelligence. It's the idea that, that um, you know, a mass of people can be, of average people actually, what they know and the kind of decision making that they can uh, perform will kind of supersede the, the sum of their, their individual contributions. Um, this technique is used by the military um, to, to seek out lost submarines and a bunch of other kind of odd things. Um, and we've kind of, I think it's, we've kind of just stumbled upon it and, and in our work doing uh, productivity improvement, but it, it, it is actually, you know, something that's scientifically rational, I guess. Yeah. A lot of people in the supply chain also are implementing lean um, kind of processes. Is this something that will work uh, with lean? Yeah, I think that's a, a good question. That also kind of comes up a, a lot of times, and, and, and the answer is yes. I mean, I, I think lean is as much a philosophy as it is a methodology. I mean, it talks about the importance of, of driving out waste. Um, but it, it doesn't necessarily always get into, you know, how do you do it? Um, I, I think one of the, the forms of waste that we see is just following a, a bad method. Um, and so you can use this in the lean context to figure out what is a wasteful activity. What, what, are, the, what are the ways to do this job that you should not do? <laughs> and then teach the right way, the more efficient way to those people that are performing it um, less efficiently. So it, it works really well, I think, I think, with the lean concept. It's not, not in contradiction to it at all. So how much time do your children spend brushing their teeth? <laughs> uh, I've, uh, I've solved this problem even easier than Mr. Gilbreth. I, I, both my kids get their own bathrooms. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank being you. with us today. I've been speaking with Steve Malike of the Progress Group. Thank you for watching.